Join us now for a moment of faith with Dr. Joe Arthur, pastor of the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesboro, Georgia. This is an internet broadcast that will air daily at 12.30 p.m. and will remain on our Harvest Facebook page for you to view at any time. This broadcast is to uplift God's children and to remind us all that faith is the victory that overcometh the world. Now here's our pastor with a moment of faith, Dr. Joe Arthur. Well, we want to welcome you again to another broadcast today, and we greet you in the name above every name, the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're just taking a few moments today out of this hustle and bustle of life in this day and hour of crisis, and we're just looking to see what God can do in your life and mine through the principle and the power of faith. May we do like the Bible says. May we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, the Bible plainly tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith honors God, and God honors faith. And this week on the broadcast, we've been looking at that great verse in 2 Corinthians 5, where it says that we walk by faith, and not by sight. And we've been turning that around and looking at it in a different light. In other words, we live by what God has said in his word and not what we see with our eye. But if we live by what we see with our eye and not what God has said in his word, it's not good. It never turns out good. And we've been looking at some characters in the Bible that did that very thing. They live by what they could see with their eye and not what God had said in his word. That's what Adam did. He lived by sight and he was deceived. That's what Lot did. He lived by sight and he was destroyed. Yesterday, we looked at Samson. That's what he did and he was defeated. I want to come today and look at a man, the prophet of fire, by, by the name of Elijah. Elijah, a man of God, a, a known of God, empowered by God, a man that saw great victories in his life. But in a time of fatigue, in a time of panic, in a time of weakness, his vision shifted. His focus shifted. He began to live by what he could see with his eye and hear with his ear. And he forgot what God said in his word. Now, what happened to Elijah, that great prophet of God? What happened to Elijah when he began to live by sight and not by faith? Well, he got discouraged. He got discouraged. When he began to live by what it looked like from the flesh, when he began to look through the physical eye at the threat of the enemy, at the danger, at him being overwhelming, seem, seemingly overwhelmed by the enemy, he didn't bring faith in his life. He didn't bring courage in his life. It brought discouragement. And I'm the first to admit that in this day of crisis in which we live, as far as the news and the media is concerned, there's not a lot of hope. There's not a lot of good news. There's not a lot of victory. It seems like in our day when we're needing to hear what we need to hear, we either hear bad news or fake news. But ladies and gentlemen, I got some good news today that we don't live by sight. We don't live by what it looks like and smells like and seems like and tastes like and feels like. Brother, we live by what God has said in his word. And I'll encourage myself today not to be discouraged. Look above the circumstances. Look away from all others and get our focus on what God has said in his word. 
I would encourage you today, be not discouraged, my dear brother and sister. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Stay focused on what God has said in his word. 1 Kings chapter 19 is a very interesting chapter in the word of God. The chapter before that, chapter 18, there's great revival. There's great manifestation of power. There is seemingly victory after victory. Holy ground, conquered ground, victorious ground. A mountaintop of explosive manifestations of faith and power and authority. But when you leave the mountaintop of chapter 18, you come to the valley. You come to the lows of discouragement in chapter 19. Chapter 18, you see Elijah standing on the mountain in victory. And by the time you come to the valley, by the time you come to chapter 19, he is under the juniper tree, doubting, questioning, overwhelmed with suicidal thoughts because he's living by sight and not by faith. And he is so discouraged. Three things about it that I want us to see quickly. Number one, I want you to see this heavy vexation. Here is a man that is vexed beyond measure. Number one, physically, he's wore out. Number two, mentally, he's wore out. Number three, emotionally, he is spent. And between the emotional and the mental and the physical stress, now it wears on him spiritually. And a man that just a chapter before had seen the mighty manifestation of the power of God is wore out. He's questioning. He's doubting. He's complaining. He's discouraged. And he thinks under that tree that he would be better off dead than alive. And I want to say this sobering word today to all of those that will watch our broadcast. Oh, may God help you and may God help me to keep our eyes on the Lord, to keep our eyes on this book, because in this day of crisis, listen to Brother Joe, I'm your friend, in this day of crisis in which we live with all of the lockdown and all of the shutdown and all of the shelter in place things that we are seeing. Boy, we are at such a place today to be attacked by the enemy with depression and anxiety and pandemonium and fear. And I, I, I'm so afraid in my heart that if this thing doesn't clear up soon, we're going to have more mental illness in our country then we have a physical illness in our country because when you're isolated and when you're away from others, it is so easy for the devil to set up workshop in your mind and in my mind. But oh, may we realize that God said to the prophet Isaiah, God would keep us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed upon thee. Oh, may God not help us. May God help us not to have those thoughts in our mind. The heavy vexation. He is so vexed. But oh, I want you to see the heavenly visitor. Oh, that was a visitor from a far country. As he's laying under that juniper tree asleep, the Bible said the angel comes and ministers to Elijah. Brought him some bread and brought him some water. God came to him under that tree and paid him a special visit. And I pray there's some preacher today some dear Christian today, some father today, some worried mother today, right now at this moment, may you have a heavenly visitor. May the sweet Holy Spirit come by, wrap you up in the arms of the Savior, and give you a sweet kiss, and you feel the hot breath of heaven on your soul. And God, encourage your heart and mind that he has not forsaken us. He is not abandon us. He has not forgotten about us. That standing somewhere even in the midst of the shadows of our discouragement and defeat. The Lord is always there. I 
I see his heavy vexation. I see his heavenly visitor. But I want you to see the holy victory that happens in his life. God gives him enough strength under that meal to go a 40 days journey to Mount Horeb. And in that mountain he hears the voice, the still small voice of God. And he gives him enough strength to go to the rest of his ministry. And hallelujah, when it came that time for God to call his prophet home, he goes out of the blaze of fire to worlds unknown because God gave him victory in the time of defeat. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let's live by what God said in his word and not what we see with our eye. May God give his people victory over fear and panic and anxiety and discouragement in these days and hours in which we live. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Stay focused on him. And may God help us today to set before us the joy of the Lord and the victory God has and is and is going to bring in your life and in mine. I enjoyed our time together today. Looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. And let's see what God can do in a moment of faith.